The 2020 London Marathon. This race is without question one of the most anticipated moments of 2020, and even though Kenanisa Bekele will unfortunately not be racing against the Great Kipchoge, we still have an absolutely amazing race to look forward to. Of course, the primary figure in tomorrow's competition is the current world record holder Elliot Kipchoge, who will be attempting to win a mind-boggling fifth London title, a feat that has never been done before by any other athlete. Clearly, this Kenyan runner is the favorite for tomorrow's race, but the big question is, are we in store for a world record performance tomorrow morning? Now, it's very possible that a world record in the marathon could go down in just a few short hours. However, there are many other aspects that are very important for tomorrow's marathon. First, let's take a look at the weather. Now, if you're like me and you've been looking at the rain predictions for about a week now, you'll know that the rain is unfortunately predicted for tomorrow's race. According to Google and all other weather applications, the chance of rain at the start of tomorrow's race is 90%. This is quite unfortunate, but there is hope, as the rain may be very dim, or perhaps it will somehow disappear just as the athletes hit the course. We can only hope for good conditions tomorrow, because if the rain does have a strong presence, the possibilities for a world record, or even a course record, will go down drastically. The next key aspect of this race that will certainly play a big role is the competition. In the men's field, Kipchoge again is the clear favorite. However, this field is stacked with many great runners who have achieved incredible times. As we mentioned in a previous video, keep your eyes out for the 28-year-old Mosinek Garamu, who is currently the fourth fastest marathoner of all time, running a personal best of 2 hours, 2 minutes, and 55 seconds at last year's London Marathon. After Garamu, watch out for Mule Wasihun, who also has a tremendous personal best, holding a time of 2 hours, 3 minutes, and 16 seconds, a time that he also ran in last year's London Marathon. Both Wasihun and Garamu were incredibly able to hold with Kipchoge for quite a long time last year, and while this endurance capability certainly bodes well for both of these runners, Kipchoge is still the clear favorite. Additional talents for tomorrow's marathon include Marius Kipsirum, Tamarat Tola, and Shura Kantata, all who have run under 2 hours and 5 minutes for this discipline. Indeed, the athletes set to compete for tomorrow's race are some of the fastest marathoners in history, so keep your eyes out for a very, very fast time. On the women's side, we also have enormous talents clashing in tomorrow's race. Up front and center is the Kenyan Bridget Kaskai, who is the current world record holder, running a time of 2 hours, 14 minutes, and 4 seconds at last year's Chicago Marathon. This time put Kaskai well over one minute ahead of any other runner ever, but she will definitely have company in tomorrow's race. In addition to Kaskai, we also have Ruth Shepengedich and Vivian Chariot, both of whom have personal bests that place them in the top 10 fastest ever. Back in 2018, Chariot won the London Marathon, and in 2019, Shepengedich placed first in the World Championships, winning the race by almost an entire minute. Just like the men's side, there is a clear favorite for tomorrow's race, but there are also a few challengers who could threaten for the title. Next, let's take a look at shoes, which has never been a source of controversy in the past. For tomorrow's race, Kipchoge is wearing the same shoes he wore when he broke the two-hour marathon last year, except this time, he'll be sporting the colors of Kenya, his own personal initials, and also the magical time of 1 hour 59 minutes and 40 seconds. Now, I know a lot of people have strong opinions about recent shoe technologies, and many of these arguments are certainly valid, but I can't help but share what Kipchoge said during his press conference just a few days ago. Oh, uh, we live in 21st century. First, we need to accept change. We are now doing press conference virtually. Is that not technology? Can we just take a moment to appreciate how smart and witty Kipchoge is? In response to the question, he not only throws down the argument that we should accept technological change, but he also points out that they're doing a virtual press conference for the very first time, which is also a technological advancement. Regardless of your opinions on the AlphaFly, the VaporFly, or any other installment of shoes with carbon fiber plates, Kipchoge will be wearing the AlphaFly Next% Percent tomorrow morning. Next, let's talk about the actual time possibilities for tomorrow's marathon. In the same press conference, both Bekele and Kipchoge mentioned a halfway split of around 61 minutes. 
This kind of pace would place Kipchoge slightly behind the current world record pace, but given what he did in 2018, when he ran a massive negative split, the world record would most definitely still be a possibility. Kipchoge also stated that different pacing would be a possibility, but he didn't specify whether or not this would mean faster or slower. Now, I'll admit, part of me is hoping that he'll go out and attempt to run a two-hour marathon, but it doesn't seem like this is actually happening, especially given that the weather conditions won't be ideal. Regardless, a fast time is probably in store for tomorrow's race, that is, if the weather conditions are acceptable. Lastly, let's take a look one last time at tomorrow's marathon course. For tomorrow's race, the race will take place around St. James Park, where the athletes will run a 2.5 kilometer loop just over 19 times. For most athletes, this will be a brand new experience unlike any other marathon they've ever run. However, I can't help but think that Kipchoge has a huge advantage here, as this kind of race does resemble what he ran last year when he broke two hours. Now, his 159 marathon was achieved on a course that only had four separate loops, but still, Kipchoge's experience here has to make him even more confident moving into this 19-lap course. Now, all we can do is wait and get even more excited for tomorrow's race. But before we go, I have one final question. Who do you have winning for tomorrow's race, and what will be the winning time? Leave a comment down below and share your thoughts. Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, until next time.